Hello there, my name is Mr. Drain, and I'm a teacher of numeracy and mathematics with the Highland Virtual Academy. Today, we're going to look at a lesson on finding non-unit fractions of a given quantity. These slides were originally created by the Oak National Academy, and in particular by a, by a gentleman called Mr. Everton. Thank you for allowing us to use these slides. So, let's begin. In this lesson, we will revisit what a non-unit fraction is. We will then use a bar modelling strategy to allow us to calculate non-unit fractions of amounts or quantities. Today, you will need a pen or pencil and a piece of paper or your jotter. If you don't have these, pause the video now and go and get them. Great. Hopefully you have them now. So, we'll begin with a warm-up. What I'd like you to do is draw or write down as many non-unit fractions as you can. You can use these mathematical pictures to help. Pause the video now for 20 seconds. Great. So, looking at these ones that we had here, the first one is three ninths. That's because we split the circle into nine even sections and three of these are shaded. So that would be three ninths. The middle one has been split into eight sections, equal sections, and five of them are shaded blue. So that would be five eighths. Last one, two eighths. These are all non-unit fractions because we have a number greater than one in the numerator part of the fraction, the top part. If it was a unit fraction, we would only have a one at the top, one ninth or one eighth, for example. Right, let's learn. What strategy can we use to find fractions of a quantity? So in this first question here, there are 12 pods in the London Eye. One quarter of the pods are empty. How many pods are empty altogether? What calculation am I trying to work out? So the calculation from this information is that we have 12 pods altogether. So we're trying to find a fraction of 12. The fraction we're looking for is a quarter. So we would be looking for a quarter of 12. That, of course, is a unit fraction. We will start with that, though, so that you can see what the strategy is like. So we're going to use a bar modeling strategy here. And the first thing that we would do is get a bar or a rectangle. We would split it up into even pieces. But when we split it up, it all has to come to 12. So we want to split it into four even pieces because we're looking for a quarter of 12. So we split it into four and we then distribute the 12 individually and equally into those sections. So we take the 12 and we fill up the sections with the 12 dots equal equally. What we can now see that quite clearly each section has three dots in it as such. And because each section is worth one quarter, one quarter of 12 must be equal to three. Easy. Now, a little bit trickier. Three quarters of 12 this time. Three quarters of the pods are full. How many of the pods are full? So again, we would start off by drawing our bar. It represents the 12 pods altogether. We split it into four equal pieces. Distribute the 12 just in the same way as we did before. Each has got three in it. Now this time though, we want three of those quarters. So we would want these ones here. And we could then say, well, that's going to be either four times three, or you could just do three plus three plus three. Either way, our answer is going to come to nine. As such. Okay, your turn. Pause the video here and try and find two fifths of 30. Excellent. How did you get on with that? If I draw my bar model then, this time it has to represent 30. So you would have to then split the 30 into five equal pieces because we're trying to find two fifths. Each part is therefore going to be worth one fifth and we have to distribute the 30 evenly between the sections. There we go. So quite clearly, we can see that each section 
has six dots in it. If we want two fifths, that's going to be two of those sections. So we're going to put a circle around there, and six add six will be 12. Or two times six, or six times two, equals 12 as well. Right, one more for you to try. Pause the video here and have a go at drawing this one out. Excellent. Okay, so hopefully this time you drew a bar model. It was worth 21 altogether. And when you distributed those 21 dots, there was three in each section. We want four sevenths, and therefore four times three is going to be equal to 12, or three add three add three is going to be equal to 12 as well. Did I miss out an extra three there? Possibly. Okay. Pause the video on the next slide to complete a task. Okay, hopefully you managed to finish the task and draw bar models for each one. What you would find is that for question one, three fifths of 25 comes to 15, this one here. That's because when you draw your bar model, it's 25 in total, and when you distribute the 25, each part had 5 in it. 25 divided by 5 equals 5. Then, because you want 3 fifths, 5 times 3 equals 15. I'm hoping here, though, that you draw a bar model to get your result. Okay, pause it here, and you could check your work out. Perfect. Now we're going to have a look at um, turning the question around a bit. So if I know the parts, can I find the value of the whole instead? Mike has four sixths of a pack of sweets. He has eight sweets altogether. How many sweets make the whole pack at this time? Right. So this is where the bar model becomes really useful. What we could say to start off is that we don't know how many sweets are in the whole packet. But what we know is that Mike has four sixths of these. So we can split the whole into six even pieces. However, Mike's sweets only makes up four sixths of the packet. So that's going to be the first four sections. And we know that they come to eight because he has eight sweets altogether. Therefore, four sixths is equal to eight. Then one sixth equals but what we can do is we can distribute his eight sweets evenly in the sections. Okay, quite clearly, we can see that there's two sweets in each of these sections here. So one sixth is equal to two. But we could also continue this pattern here because we know that each section has to be equal. So there's also two sweets in the final two sections. Therefore, if I want to know how many sweets there are altogether, I just need to add up those six sections. Or six times two is equal to 12, would work as well for it. Brilliant. Okay, your turn. Pause the video here and see if you can work out um, how many bricks make the whole box. Okay, how did you get on? Trickier? Let's see. So we have the bar. We don't know how many bricks there are in the whole box. But what we do know is that Amy has three quarters. So we want to split it into four equal pieces. And we know that those four equals pieces comes to 15. Therefore, we can distribute the 15 bricks evenly amongst the first three sections. Okay, that's five in each one then. So one quarter must be equal to five. Now, we just finished the pattern off. There must be five in the final section there. And therefore, all together, how many bricks make the whole box? Well, we could do four times five, or five, add five, add five, add five, is equal to 20. Great. Did you need to use uh, the hints over the right-hand side over here? Excellent. Okay. 
Can you now pause the video on the next slide and have a go of the questions in the part two worksheet? Great. Answers for part two then. So there were 16 bean bags in the whole set, and we want to find three quarters. Uh, sorry, we want to find how many were in the whole set. So we could do 12 divided by three equals four. Then we could do that four times four is equal to 16. Easier to draw a bar model though. And number two, 16 divided by four equals four. Four times 10 equals 40 this time. Great. That takes us to the end of the lesson. But there is a knowledge quiz available for you to check your understanding. If you have these slides open, click on the link here. If not, the link is uh, down here in the comment section on YouTube. OK, I'll catch up with you uh, later on and we can have a talk about any issues that you had or show off any great work that you did. Bye now and I'll see you later.